Good morning. So, welcome back. Today, we are going to be tackling our an, an animation problem. Basically, I am tired of those door animations flip flopping back and forth and back and forth. And it is time for that to end. Also, we're trying out some new music that Patrick sent me. I'm pretty excited about this. I, th I think this sounds pretty good. Good type of village music. So, general plan. Talked about it last time. Right now, all those doors are sitting on the decoration layer. We need to turn those doors into entities. Starting with this one. We have two we have two door variants, the south-facing door, like basically the horizontal doors and the vertical doors. So, so let's think about this. Go ahead and create a new object. Objects. Call this one door zero class door sell so sprite index and sprite sheet. So let's go ahead and use that same system. The problem is, what is the index of that door? Let's see, is there a select that tile? That's not what I want. I can go into the pal set and just start counting tiles, but I'd rather it tell me. Oh, great. It's uh, 16 by 76. So, basically, I selected it. I went to the stamping tool, right click the door, it selects it there, and it gives us an image rect. And an ID. I, I can't count on the ID, though. Or can I? Let's go back to our map definition, because that layer for decoration looking for the decoration layer oh I know I put it in here somewhere There it is. So the decoration there is an ID of 1009. Look at that first GID value, but I'm not seeing it here. I've been in the tile set. First GID and it's 2092, which if you subtract 2002 from 1009, you get a negative number, which is not what we're wanting to do right now. Alright, alternative. We're gonna math it. So, basically, the tile ID is equal to the tiles. Y position times the tile width, like the width of the sheet in tiles, plus the tiles X position. So we don't know any of those values right now. We go to our tile set for decorations.
you want to know how far across it is, the width of the whole image is four, 448. You can see that down here. It's kind of small, but it's there. So width in tiles is 448 divided by the tile width of 16 by 28. The tile's X position is 16. Wait a second. Yeah, the X position is 16. There. <laughs> so X is 16 divided by 16, which is 1. And the Y is 576 divided by 16, which is 36. Now we get the tile ID again. 1,009. Oh. Well, that matches this number precisely. So, great. Could have just used that all along. Tile ID is 9. Let's use that on our door entity. Sprite sheet. We're going to use the decorative sprite sheet because it's already there. Now, to make this work, do a couple of things. One of them is, it's like how we're loading NPCs. Go back to our level loader. RPG guide tiled level. And source. I have to remember how I'm doing this. It's tough when you can't remember how you how your own magic works. Oh, where did I put that thing? Okay, low level. Right, we did not actually parameterize that at all. We're still loading them individually one at a time. Cool. Fine for two NPCs and a player. It's going to get annoying when we have a whole pile of these things. Okay, fine. No, I'm not sure we need that global reference anymore. Before we add the door to this collection, let's see if we can do this without destroying everything. Retest. So we do not need the Voldemort's global references for our NPCs. It's, I was pretty sure that was true. So we call it this thing door zero.
And we're going to start, at least, by building this the exact same way as we were building the NPCs. New scripts, name of the level, name of the entity. And, in fact, we have a template. Now we can start with this. Why did I call it in game conversation? I'm going to keep it short. Very name begin conversation should just say. Scripting's a little simpler. That I will probably think of myself for later. So that the function begin conversation, which makes sense in the context of the game engine, is going to be renamed to say function inside of each of our scripts. If all that worked, the door should be there, and should, there should just be another flip-flopping door. But this one will be able to talk to. Just crash the whole thing. Stack trace, entity line seven. Right there. Oh, we didn't create that sprite sheet. Oh, where did I put the sprite sheets? See, there's a player, but the door uses the deck of sprite sheet. You can see it there. We need to actually define that. And lost the image. So assets, images, tile, and zero. One. All right, Let's see if that fixes it. We're back, and that is not a door. I'm not exactly sure what that is. But you know, we can walk on top of it, and that's kind of interesting. <laughs> okay. Let's see, we can debug this. Or is your sprite index nine? This sprite index nine. Did I type that? I think it's one thousand nine, wasn't it? Yeah, 1009. And. Well, it looked like it grabbed one of these, but none of these is number nine, so I'm not really sure what happened there. 
and uh, and change the door entity to use 1009. See what effect that had. Nothing. That had no effect at all. I didn't save. Ta-da! Now it's invisible. <laughs> Why is that invisible? All right, let's let's think about this. Sprite index one thousand nine. What will be deco sprite sheet? It was using that. Doesn't really make sense. Changing it to 10. I want to see what happens. Sense of this. Yeah, that's the next tile there. 10 loaded. Four. This just begs the question. Where is it getting those numbers from? I'm not saying any way that something down here could be a 10. Not even counting from the bottom. Our sprite sheet. Um, that could be a problem. Sprite sheet width and sprite sheet height are hard coded here. Let's readdress that for a second. First, changing our door back to 1009 because I think it's right. All right, so the, one of the problems I'm seeing here is that when we build our sprite sheet, we Built it based off of these sprite sheets, specifically the player. Static size 128 by 240, and hard coded some values, which are now coming back to bite us after all these days, weeks. There it is. the width of our player sprite sheet. Now, one thing that we can do here sprite sheet width and height are both in tiles. Self dot image dot width divided by tile size. Sprite sheet wipe. Okay. Miles per row is the sprite sheet width divided by the tile size again.
is the house prayer room. This is the house prayer column. This is self image height. Sprite sheet height is never used, so we don't need tiles per column. There you go. We just solved that to do. <laughs> These need to get pulled from the image. Thank you, past self. Make sure your current self is always nice to your future self. Your future self will thank you later. <laughs> I wonder if I fixed it. There it is. A new flip flopping door. That yeah, we can walk through. Should not be able to walk through it. I've noticed we can't walk through these entities. And I've also noticed that I can't seem to be talk to this door the way that I expected to. Yeah, the door is definitely not talking to me. Because right now, we have a, a talk function attached to the door. And one thing that'll help with that is adding it to the entity collection. I'm going to modify this a bit. The door zero onto our entity collection. That makes more sense. Create the entity, add it to the list. Put in door zero. Try again. It's stopping me. Cool. Now we need to make that door not flip flop. Ultimately, I want it to be like when you talk to the door, instead of instead of talking, the door just like opens or closes. So let's think about how to do that. If we go into our entity, and see that the entity sprite is an animation from the sprite controllers collection. Well, we create an animation, we create an animated sprite, and then we play an animation. For doors, though, we want the animation to be different. I'm wondering, first of all, oh, there has to be a clean way to do this. to see if we can find a reference to our sprite controller. I cloned the system disk down from GitHub recently, so like, it's a little easier for me to dig through the files. Sprite controllers. Animation, speed, loop. I mean, it's Sprite, we have a current animation. I 
platform where we have some state strings. All right, one way we could do this is to have three animation steps. Try to figure out what I want to call this thing. First one loop. Game zero. One. Keep it simple. Frame zero will be animation with just the first index. Frame one will be animation with just the second index. And all the speeds we set the same. Technically, the speed won't matter on these because they're single frame. But I'm going to set it anyway, just in case something weird happens later. Don't need those variables. Do we need animation frame? We're not using it anymore. And then paint the sprite. Split off the visuals from the density properties. Sprite scale, play, self. Animations loop. So now now every entity is going to have three types of animations. It can loop, it can stay on frame zero, or it can stay on frame one. Hopefully this will just still work. Oh, forgot something. Nine thirteen. Yes, taking those commas. Punctuation matters so much with computer format. All right, so we're still animated. We have not broken anything. Now, to do. I think what I want to do is have it when you when you load the door. What I'd like to be able to do is like self dot animation equals frame zero. But the problem there is that self is already defined by the system. I can probably overwrite it. And it might be the best idea. Might leave the ugly things later. Let's try it. Every script will have a self variable that references the entity that the script is for. <clears throat> uh. 
that's not actually necessary. What we need is that. That's actually a lot cleaner. I'm not mingling the self keyword. Which was making me uncomfortable anyway. What we need Oh, the animation still. Here. This is one way you could do it. Don't know if this is the best way. I think this is one way you could do it. I'm uh, I don't see any reason why I couldn't, but I feel like there there sh it it feels weird. I'm not sure what the consequences will be long term. Maybe nothing. Maybe it'll be just be fine. Let's switch the animation though. Well, let's see what happens. If if this works right, Door Zero will have a play animation function available at the base level of our script, which will then change the like start tell the sprite begin playing the animation referred to by animation name from the animations list, which should make Door Zero begin playing the frame zero animation. Loading. We got a loading indicator. Like something beyond fading to black. For example, that actually crashed. Door zero line one. There is an error. Did it not know how to do a play animation? Loaded in door zero, it failed on line one. Because. Okay, that actually makes sense because we import it here. The animation isn't defined for two more lines. So it's immediately running the code it finds and first tries writing the play animation function, which does not yet exist. Solution, solution, do that. Every give every script the ability to run an on init function that will run right after everything is in place. And the way you'd have to do that. Oh, I forget. Is it uh, things or has it X? Yeah. As index. So we're checking the script. If it has the on init function, run the on init function. init for initialize for the uninitiated
Reset, rerun. And check that out, the door is just sitting there quietly, waiting for us to come over and talk to it. Crash. Deck trace. Conversation UI line 14. expect that to die right there. Is it just the door or is it all of the... Can the other NPCs talk? I want to know if we just kill the ability for NPCs to talk. No? That guy can still talk. Why won't my door talk to me? Exact same way with many parentheses. O R parentheses. Talk to the door again. Crash. Type error while attempting to look up Lin. Conversation UI line 14. Let's take a look at conversation UI line 14. Fiction text at length. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, well, attempting to look up the length. How do we want to debug this? Get over there. Say, I'm a door. Which is getting into the conversation UI. It's opening the window. Oh. Say is supposed to take two parameters. The name of the NPC. And that bit there. You know, I don't like that. I'm going to fix this a different way. I'm going to change the way we've defined action. So we define begin conversation here. I don't like it. We're going to define the say function, same as we did with begin conversation. Does the entity know its own name? Yes, it does. We're going to define a function like this. We're going to take something that I thought was a dubious idea, and we're just going to run with it everywhere. It's a little more parameterized. I should know that I hate magic strings. Parametrical they are. All right, so this is beginning to get unmanageable. Just the bit for loading in PCs is getting super long. The way to solve that. Do 
way we solve this. PC zero, NPC one, door zero, or name and entity names. All of these load exactly the same. It's just uh, so the names change. That name is only referenced once when you're loading the entity. I wonder what's going to happen creating this function in a loop like this. Will it will it hold on to the definition of new entity at this iteration of the loop? Or is it going to keep modifying which new entity it's looking at inside this function? I don't I don't know I don't know how it's gonna work exactly. I know how I want it to work. There, that should load in all three of our entities. They're loaded the exact same way. So we have a template now. Oh, we also changed the definition of say, which is now, so now door will work, but our NPCs are broken. See, isn't that nicer? On talk, just just say something. Don't need a whole lot of fluff in your in your game scripts. From the top, and go. Not going. Basically, I'm typing the word clear, and hitting enter. Just get all that black off the screen. Current program line 55. Oh, I hate that kind of error. That's the problem right there. Mm -hmm. Undefined identifier TXT is unknown in this context, line 57. All right, it's that. Oh, yeah, I used the word TXT because I didn't want to risk overriding the built in text variable, which in this case actually won't matter. So I'm going to do it anyway. And I'm a door. Ha ha ha. We can talk to our door. We still talk to our NPCs. We're going to talk to this guy over here. Cool. That works. Okay. Now, what we're going to do. is open is false on talk is open equals not is open ray animation ray one else play animation name zero So toggle the is open. Talking should like flip flop the door. If it's open, switch to frame one, otherwise keep it at frame zero, which is the same as closed. And can you give these some more descriptive names? Closed.
open. Use the right name to type variables. And that should allow us to toggle our door, but it will have one more problem. A couple more problems. We crashed again. Or util line four. Neat. Crash. And program line 91. Weird. Or util line four, import module name. Right. Let's undo those changes. Hold on. I'm gonna make sure it wasn't because of that rogue tilde or back take. Yeah. There was a syntax error. And is open one. Let's see. Warning assignment of unqualified local is open based on non local is deprecated. Basically, if you're doing this, you gotta do globals dot. If you're reassigning a global variable, you gotta be explicit. Enter, it's not talking, it's not doing anything. Just see if we can get into playing the open animation. And it do that based off of that variable. Yes. Let's try doing it that way. Oh, I think it's because I was flip-flopping this thing. Yeah, it's because I was toggling the variable before I toggled the animation. I just had my operations out of order. Funny. I think. False. If you're open, play the closed animation set is open to false. Otherwise, open the door and set is open to true. We can open the door, but we cannot close the door. Oh, right.
Let's just get, dump out the state of that variable. Always zero, 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 no matter what. Zero. Basically, the outer keyword looks at the scope just outside of whatever scope you're in, I believe. Just referring to that everywhere. Let's see what effect that has. And that worked. Set referring to global scope, we refer to the outer scope. Okay, cool. So we should be able to toggle this like so. Toggle the is open. Have the door switch between open and closed. Open, 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 maybe open animation. Now, the second problem is that we can't walk through the door. So we need something like this. And we need to define that function. We need to decide how to implement it. If we go into our entity definition, if we're going to move, let's see, check the last level if the space is blocked. Let's go into our level definition is blocked we see if something's in the collision layer so then you're blocked and then we check all the entities and if there's an entity there we say the space is blocked and basically we need to do this say that if, if, there, if the entity is there and the entity blocks movement then we return true that, that the space is blocked now we have to give the entity the blocks movement property, which is fairly simple. So if blocks movement is true, and then we need to give our scripts the ability to toggle the blocks movement variable. That was in our main function. The allow passage blocks movement if well basically the inversion of that if allow passage is true then blocks movement is false it was kind of like a weird way to do it but it makes the script easy to read which is what I want retest Door is blocked. Try to go through it. Can't open the door, and we can go through. Oh boy! 
that will cook in full. So we are going to replace all of our doors. See, it's door zero. And we're going to make a door one up here. Operation. If you erase that door, this is my eraser I'm watching. Okay. Trying to reach the door, but it's not going away. I'm reloading that map. Any races? Okay. Select our door one. Now it's door two. Then we're going to create our horizontal doors. This one, the title ID is 1008. Remember that number. So door three, 1008. Grace the old door. And one of those right there. Oops. I erase the flowers. I like the flowers. And I also would like to use some of those treasure chests. I don't want them animating like nuts. I just go nuts either. Thousand seventy six. Then don't need that in the collision layer. We can erase that part of the decoration layer. And then we can slide that chest into place. Duplicate that. We're going to stick it up here. Information, we erase the tile. The chest is going to work a lot like a door, but not exactly. Also, we have a problem in that we have a whole pile of door animations 
but only one door script. Every door is going to work the same. Here's how we're going to handle it. Door and door script, we're going to have a chest script. Chests can toggle between open and close, but the allow passage will not change. It's still not lock on the chest. And it's going to be the same for every level, so we're going to move it up. We're going to make use of the glass. Where did my toolbar go? And I went and lost all my toolbars. There we go. Let's select the door. You'll see that there's a name. There's also a class. Every door has the same class. Every chest has the same class. We're going to use that with the script. Sure. Let's make sure we have access to that property on our entity. We make level name. <clears throat> it's being loaded from the high old file. Should just be pulling all properties. Uh, no, I think it's supposed to go here. Let me see. We're going to go back to our level JSON file. <laughs> oh, I not caught this. So it's right there, and I actually like that better. So the entity knows what type of thing it is. So if it's an NPC, that, then we are going to load the script from there. Else, the types of door. We are going to load the door script. Or it could be a chest, and we'll just load the test script. That should do it. Let's find out. Oh, I see there's a closed door. Press enter to open it. Close it again on the way out. Okay, let's test this. The chest isn't there. We're gonna have to come back to that. 
That door isn't there. The doors aren't loading, chests aren't loading. So basically, the only thing that works is that very first door. Sad. Why is it only loading one? Let me think. Oh! Ha! Problem is, that does not contain all of our entities. It only contains those first three. Get around that. I I can't be expected to remember hard code that hard coded list. How many three? Basically, we have an object layer on our level. The name is Entities. We have a list of objects. And entities, that is an object layer, an object root, there's a list of objects in it. Now the object name. I'm hoping that when I run this, it will just print out the list of all the objects to the screen. Oh. All right, so it's in red, but you can see all of our objects there. It's good. I see door zero is listed twice. A couple things are listed twice. That's a little weird. There's nothing hiding. No, the print problem is that we're printing the entity right there. Okay. So, let's see name equals OBG dot name. And then I think we can just flip that. I can go there. I think that will make all of our entities for us. Let's test it. Testing. It crashed. That trace, current program line one. Oh, I. That error.
Start from my 99. Just being too impatient. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Clear. Stack trace. Nine ninety nine. Comment that out for a minute. Eat that. Okay, so it runs. Don't have any entities now, just the player. Figure out exactly where it was failing. So enable this a little piece at a time here. Okay. Do that. It's defined. Rerun. Being two players, that's a little weird. Oh, wait. Is trying to attach all that stuff to the player object. I'm just going to do a little check. If it's the player, we're just going to skip the iteration of the loop. Player gets special handling. Let's turn this stuff back on. A test. And it, uh, everything loaded. Our door is not interacting. That's a bit of a problem. But that in a minute. Really close. The door, door zero, one, two, three, and three. You have too many door threes, so we do this one's door four. So it's finding the door. See, when we talk to the door, we're going to have it print out the word hey there to our 
text log. Oh, well, it is talking to the door. One of the problems is that our check is going for talking, is going to check all the surrounding entities, and there's going to be a bit of a racing condition on what it's going to choose the chest or the door. It is talking to the door because it says, hey there. It's just not. Do a sanity check, throw this little function in there, get the name of whatever entity we're currently at. Make sure when we talk at door zero, it's actually, it, act, it knows that it's door zero. NPC one. It thinks it's talking to NPC one. That's just weird. All right. What that tells me is that this mechanism for attaching functions mid loop like that is not doing what we wanted. That's too bad. All right, get over my disappointment that the system does not do it, do things the way that I wished it would. And we are going to move on. New, another way of doing this, which might be just later. Add a field to our script called entity assigned to this entity. Outer now refers to the script object, which has an entity. It's a lot more verbose, which is not what I wanted. I want to see this working today. And we can clean it up next time. I can just see it working. Saturate door line seven. No. Oh. Actually needs to be like that. Let's 
Scrum program line 69 or line 7. Okay, we can talk to our chest. Get my name not found. Oh. <laughs> Works. Um, I'm actually going to toggle this again. Kind of hoping we don't have that. Program sixty nine, door nine seven. In place for now. I'm still open to do that later. Open the chest, open the door. Hey there, player. Promising. Yes. I should feel really good about this. I look so much better now that those animations aren't flip flop flopping. Right. I think that we're going to leave that there today. I'm feeling pretty happy about that. I think where we need to go from here. Still would like to do a little bit more build up around the town. Make it look the We need to start building in some sort of story. That's gonna start in the town level. And we're going to do some work up in the field to employ some sort of random encounter battle system. Gotta figure out what that looks like. But uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, this is just looking so good. <laughs> and the new music sounds great. Patrick is doing a great job with that. Alright, and that is it. Thank you for joining me on this adventure, and I uh, hope to see you next time.